welcome everybody. It's John the Net Guy, and we are here live on YouTube and Facebook for our budget $500 PC build. Now, a couple housekeeping items I got to throw out there real quick. We're going to be doing this on Amazon Live, and there's some special rules to Amazon Live that I have to follow. So you won't see me directing to other sites, domains, won't be telling you to like, subscribe, my channel, follow me on Twitter, things like that. But you're more than welcome to now. You can do that. There is a link to the Amazon Live in the video description. I'd recommend jumping over to that and take a look at that link up there, that shop, the net guy. That's where my build list is going to be. So we're going to go through that. But before I let the Amazon people in here, I just wanted to cover that housekeeping item. Make sure you ask questions. I love interactions. And so if you have an idea, maybe for a different case or maybe an upgrade, we'll talk through that. Also, let me know how my audio level is. Uh, I had an issue last stream and somebody helped me out right in the beginning and it made the rest of the stream go way smoother. So welcome. I've got my coffee. Hopefully you have yours. We're going to get this thing started and kicked off. I've got the Amazon people over here waiting, so i gotta got to turn them on real quick. Uh, just a quick thing of note here. Um, again, links in the video description. I am going to say follow on Amazon a lot. It's going to get annoying, but the way Amazon works, people show up throughout the show. So I just want to make sure that uh, you know that, don't get annoyed by it, <laughs> and we'll go from there. So awesome, and Chris K, audio sounds great on YouTube. Thank you so much for the sound check there. And this is going to be a great machine. It's going to be a pretty quick build. There's only six parts, but uh, let me throw up the, the banner here, and we'll get the Amazon people in. Three, two, one. And welcome back, everyone. It is John the Net Guy, and we are live doing a sub $500 budget gaming PC build today. So, just wanted to tell you thank you so much for joining here. Uh, really, really excited to go through this build with you today. I, I love building computers. This one's a super simple six part build. You can't screw it up. There is a build list. If you look at that URL above here and you're watching on Amazon, if you go visit there, there's going to be a build list. If you go there, and I'll show you how to do it here in a second on the computer, you can actually see all the parts that we're going to use for this build. Full disclosure, I get a very tiny commission from those sales, so I do appreciate that. I've got all the parts back here. There are also some really cool upgrades that you can do. So I just wanted to tell you about that. That's in another list. So I made it super simple. If you go there, we can you know buy everything off the one list, the six parts, and you can build the exact same machine we're building today. If you think something would be better, you know, it needs some more storage or you want a better motherboard or whatever, there's some other options in there as well. So I just want to recommend that. Uh, other quick item of note, yesterday, <laughs> less than 24 hours ago, I was live doing a gaming monitor showcase for Black Friday. A lot of those monitors are still on sale. So really excited about that. And this one, this Scepter here is going to be a Black Friday special, sorry, Cyber Monday special as well as the Black Friday. So I just want to tell you about that. Uh, just a quick peek at those monitors in case you didn't see them. This is what they look like. There was uh, two 24-inch monitor gaming monitors and three of the 27s. And those were just awesome. So I just wanted to tell you about that now real quick. Give me one second. I'm going to turn the AC on in here, you know, I forgot about that, you know, getting everything ready this morning. So um, this is the build specs of the machine that we're going to build. It's not going to have a GPU, but the really cool thing about that is you don't need one. Y you know, for the games that you might play that need a GPU, yes, we can, you can add a GPU to this mix. It'll work really well. For Fortnite, for Valorant, for... Uh, even Apex Legends, I guess, can play pretty well. I haven't done that. Uh, PUBG, a few others that can get away with a 2 or a 4 gig shared video memory video card. This is a great machine. Uh, there's some th decisions that I made when building these specs out to get to under $500, and it's always going to be a give and take. If you want to upgrade a certain thing, you can. Like this is the 5600G APU, which is the, the combo graphics and CPU in one. But if you wanted to go to the 5700G, if that's what was available at the time, more power to you. So there's some really cool combo ones right now. The, the GPU crisis, I don't know. If you got lucky enough to get a GPU, let me know in the chat. But I don't think it's going anywhere 
Hey everyone, I'm going to just say hi in the Amazon chat. And again, remind you guys that you can join me on Amazon. You can ask questions as we're doing the build. I got a couple other cool things. I got a couple different camera angles here. So I've got that one over here that we can use to look in the machine. I also have one up here that I'm going to drag over and you're going to see exactly what I'm doing on this motherboard. So if you were to follow along close enough and you were to go in there and buy everything that's in that list, let's go over to Amazon and look. You could absolutely build this machine yourself. Uh, there's nothing holding you back from doing that. So just getting my screen set up so I can show you how to do that. And we'll get over to my Amazon shop. So as you can see here, if you go to that URL above, you get to my Amazon page. And if you come down here, there's this $500 budget gamer. If you click on that, this is all of the parts. Now it looks like our CPU is out of stock again, and this motherboard is out of stock. They come in and out. Um, if you want to get a, a cost savings here, get that motherboard out of the Amazon warehouse. If you're comfortable with computers, get it out of the Amazon warehouse and you can save a few bucks. Hey, Dave Frank. And Hey, Chris, welcome again. Uh, people that are going to follow on Amazon, I'll give you a free shout out on the, on the air here. And thank you very much for doing that. So there are a couple upgrades you can do. I do want to tell you, if you want to do the upgrades, you see this Black Friday PC upgrade list. These are some parts that I would say would be a good upgrade if you wanted to do something a little cooler. You know, maybe you wanted that 5700. Um, I have heard that with these APUs, this is a, a very high speed memory, same amount of memory, but its cast latency is 14. So very low latency that actually makes the APU run faster for graphics, which is a great idea. If you're going to use this, I personally like the NZXT cases here. Hey, Zachary doing a build at the same time. That's basically the upgrade version of this. Zach says, yeah, absolutely. You know, there's, there's a lot of paths that you can go with this system, including the one I've got in my cart here. I, I need to make sure. I think I checked out this morning on it, but if you want the black version of this case, which looks just as sharp, you can see my price here is 4886 on that because it's a warehouse uh, version. It was a returned case, maybe not even used. And so I can get it for a significant discount. Also, there's the Montec Air, I believe that's what that one is. Uh, that's one we're going to do a future PC build in, an Intel build. And that's a great one. If you don't want that big 200 millimeter up front, you want more front airflow. That's got four fans, all addressable. Uh, you know, maybe you want a bigger power supply. You know, I think people actually, that's one area where people overspend is they buy really, really big. <laughs> Zach says he went a little heavier on the RGB, which I, I don't doubt. There's a lot of options you can do with these cases. But, um, you know, if, if you want a bigger power supply, you think you're going to go with a, you know, 5950 or some massive chip. Again, you might want to upgrade board and power supply at that point. That, that board that we've got right there, I don't have it in the carousel today, but I have the, the exact board. Another Amazon warehouse find. Um, this one, I think I paid around $70 for it. So this is that B550, but it has the Wi-Fi built in, and it has four RAM slots. So that's another cool thing. That might be a good upgrade path if you're going there. And then as well, let me, let me pull up a couple parts here while we're talking about them. You know, the board that we're looking at here does not have Wi-Fi built in. So you're not going to get Wi-Fi on this board. For gamers, they're not going to use it anyway. You're going to want to go hardwired. Everybody does. But if you do need that, I'm trying to think if I've got uh, an extra one laying over here in the parts stash. But that uh, you know N150 is the minimum. It's a $10 Wi-Fi USB dongle. You could throw that in one of the empty slots and you could have Wi-Fi for this. Or you could upgrade the motherboard. And then lastly, everybody likes to ask. They say, what about the Windows license? That's a quarter of the build right there. Now, technically, there are places that you can get not their OEM keys, uh, but with Windows 11, it's starting to get a lot tighter. So I've I've included a license to Windows right there that you can get an official copy of Windows. Comes with a USB flash drive to make it super easy to install. But I just wanted to show you that as well. So that's how you get to it. If you go to that shop, the net guy, you're gonna see this page right here. And if I refresh, you're actually gonna see <laughs> this live stream in progress here. You can see it's kind of chicken and the egg there. Um, also, if you want to see that other show that I did, go ahead and click on my past live streams here. And this is going to take you not only to the current show in our chat, um, but you can see the gaming monitor showcase. I've done a bunch of showcases for wise. I've got a really cool monitor arm showcase I did. So um, that really can help make a cool gaming setup and a couple other ones. So without further ado, 
I'll bring us back here and we're going to start getting onto this build. So um, if you have any questions about the build, shoot them out in the chat. I see quite a few of you here and, uh, you know, just throw them out there. I'm going to bring this camera over here. This is our top down camera, just as I go over the parts list. Okay. So these are the parts that we have here. So this is the motherboard and I've already taken the liberty of installing the Ryzen 5600 chip. Um, this is the cooler that comes with it. Now, normally they have a pad here, but I've taken this on and off a couple times. So I'm going to use some just thermal compound. I'm going to use the Noctua stuff here. And then this is the memory that we have. And I'm going to show you guys how to install all of this. There's a bunch of screws that come over here as well. So when you set this up, you're going to get a bunch of screws and they do have different sizes, but we'll talk about what each size of screw essentially does. And then let's look at this guy. This is your, your back plate for your case. So this is your IO shield, and this is going to have uh, spots for all of your IO to stick out on your case uh, and keeps the dust and debris out of it. So that's a quick tour of the parts. I also have behind me here, the power supply unit. So like I said, these six parts with just those, you can build an entire gaming machine. So this is the EVGA power supply. Really basic, simple one. It is a wired power supply here. It's not modular. So another cool thing you could do is actually get the modular one and it doesn't have these. So that's the EVGA power supply. While we're on the motherboard, I'm going to actually just talk about these and I'm going to highlight them on the carousel while we're here. So I'm going to bring up this CPU. So when you buy the CPU and this one, I actually have a, a spare um, that's still brand new in box. It's going to come like this. So you're going to have that new inbox CPU. It's going to have the chip on one side and it's going to have a cooler built in, uh, in the box here. So it's coming with it. You can upgrade the coolers as well. There's lots of vendors. I've done some shows on those. Um, that make better coolers. When you're putting these in, uh, AMD is a little bit different than Intel. So AMD CPUs have pins on them. Be super duper careful with these. So those are the pins that you can see here. And there is a corner that has a little tiny gold arrow on it. It's top and bottom is going to have that arrow. And that's telling you that the motherboard has an arrow as well. So you're going to want to line those two up, set it down, and then close the lever. And that's the, the ZIF socket, they call it, zero insertion force. So you don't have to press down. You don't have to do any, any sort of pressure. I like to get my motherboard all ready to go before I throw it in a case here. So we're looking at that CPU that's in there. Now, if you have a really old cooler, they use these existing cooler mounts that come with most motherboards. But we can take those out. Don't necessarily discard these because you can use them later if you're going to use this uh, for a different system or a different mounting. But we are going to take them off of here because our fan does not use those. And like I said, I recommend kind of getting everything ready here before we go to the next step. So this is the fun part. <laughs> Let me know in the chat. <laughs> the, yeah. Zach, he's a, he's a hoot. He says, uh, the pins are the reason he keeps a steak knife handy. You can use a steak knife. I recommend a, a razor blade. If you ever bend a pin or bend a couple, use a, a flat razor to push them back into alignment. That helps a lot. This is the point that's going to get me in a lot of trouble. People are going to screenshot this, put it on Twitter, and they're going to scream about it. Uh, the amount of thermal compound to use. So when you buy this, it's going to have a pad. You don't need the thermal compound. I'm doing this just because I've used quite a bit of this already. So I am putting the thermal compound out. Oh, sorry. <laughs> My luck. There we go. And I'm going to put this thermal compound out. I'm going to use about a pea size, maybe a heavy pea. There's different, there's different ideas to this. Like I said, you can, you can have larger amounts, you can have smaller amounts. So I just put that right there. I'm going to take the cooler now, again, you have different directions, directionality of this. It doesn't matter which way you go. I like to leave a lot of RAM clearance. Um, so that's one of the things I'm going to put this cooler in. So, you know, I'm going to put the cooler down and it's, it's a rectangle. It's not a square. Those, those screws are actually rectangular and they match. So I'm going to put them down here on top. And as I do that, it's going to help spread the thermal compound. Now that's not exactly straight when I put it down. So 
we're going to do that. So that's down. Again, we're building today an AMD 5600G based gaming system. So it's going to be a pretty decent gaming system. Now I'm going to use a little bit of downward pressure here. And I'm going to start kind of like you're doing a tire there, going corner to corner. And you want a little bit of pressure to make sure it engages to the back of the motherboard. And I'm going to put that here. So what we're basically doing here is we are loading up. I'm going to move this camera a little bit closer so you can see better. We are loading up the motherboard with a CPU and a CPU heatsink cooler. Abertherm. I wonder what an Abertherm is, RJ. I play Roblox. This thing would kill in Roblox, this machine. So under $500. And like I said, if, if you want a machine that's going to grow with you, I have some test footage that I'm going to show you here. Uh, and I might even just pull that up for fun while we're building, take a little break here when we have a sec. And I can show you how it plays. We can show the systems. I'm going to switch over to the RAM now because that's the next component going in. So I'm picking this RAM, this chip here. These are eight gig chips and I'm going to use two of them so I'm going to get the the dual channel mode they're 3600 megahertz so that's important their cast latency 18 don't worry about all those numbers but essentially they're a pretty fast memory and in the upgrade list if you saw that that I had uh, earlier shown you can actually upgrade this to a, a faster cast latency if you want if you feel the need and the way memory slots in here I'm going to try to get this down a little bit closer so when I'm putting the memory in, it's got a side that's shorter and a side that's longer. I'm going to take the shorter side here where I matched it on the board. I'm going to push it down and let it lock in. In this case, this board has one side that's fixed and one side that is not. So these are kind of fun to get the memory in and we got it to latch. We'll do the next one. So memory stick, short side, and you see they have a taper to them already. There's actually a real fine taper. This is the OWL series memory, and that's how you push it in. It's a lot easier to do it on a flat surface. One of the things I recommend, too, when building, if you don't have a silicone mat like I do, just use the motherboard box. You now have a <laughs> electrically you know, a uh, neutral surface that you can work on and you can hook the power supply up and you can do all that stuff. So I recommend doing it that way. So we just did the memory install. We do have the CPU installed with thermal compound. As far as tightness of these, I like to go back through and, you know, get them snug, but you don't have to tighten them hard. They're on uh, springs, the screws. That's that noise you're hearing. Okay. There we go. That one was a little bit loose. The one we started with originally. Let me show you what that's actually screwing into on the bottom of the motherboard. So that's this plate here from AMD that they include a back plate from the motherboard. A couple interesting things. Let's go back to wide here. Um, if you're buying this, this one actually came from the Amazon warehouse deals. That's a great place. I was just talking to Zach Tech Turf this morning on Twitter. There's my Amazon warehouse sticker on the bottom that shows that it was purchased from there. I got a great deal on this motherboard. Same with my other ones. It's probably one of the easiest ways you can save a lot of money on a motherboard or some of these components is to buy used or returns. And what's interesting to me is if you see, they never even opened the IO shield. So that tells me it's more than likely was never installed in a machine, which can be really interesting. So welcome everybody that's come here and will this handle CAD products? You know what? For most stuff, yeah, 3D rendering and all that stuff might be worse, but for just basic line drawing CAD and that would be good. This PC would not be great itself for crypto mining, but if you had some GPUs, you could totally do that. It's got a couple slots, so you could do that. And just one quick thing. If you do follow me on Amazon, I will give you a shout out on the show by name. Thank you guys uh, for joining. We're taking a look at this budget PC that we're building. I'm John, the net guy. You can visit my Amazon shop to see the build list. I'm just going to pull that up one more time because I don't want you guys to miss out. I'll show you exactly where you can get all of these parts. I am calling them out in the carousel as we're installing them. Let's go over here. So this is my Amazon store. And that's the products that I have up right now. If you click on $500 Budget Gamer, these are all of the parts that we're using right now. I'm on the memory right now. If you want to upgrade some 
some of the components, you can use any of these ones as an upgrade to what we have there as well. So that's if you visit that URL at the top, you're going to hit here. And you're also going to see the live stream running right now. And you see me. So just a few seconds delayed. It's always fun to see myself on there. Okay. So yeah, like I said, got a warehouse deal here. Um, Zach says that his B550 was an Amazon warehouse deal. Um, the only way you could tell it was used was a box that came in on. Absolutely. That's another really cool way to do this. Um, is because, you know, you can save quite a bit. And if it doesn't work for any reason, if you have time, if it's not an urgent thing, you can send the Amazon warehouse motherboard back and get a brand new one. Uh, most of the computer components that I've seen, they go bad either right away, um, or they go bad several years later. So the warranty on these is 90 days on most of the Amazon warehouse, I believe double check that to be sure. But, you know, um, I'm comfortable buying Amazon warehouse parts because I work on computers a lot. So there's that inside the box on this motherboard, just to remind you, they do come in a nice static shield here. Let me show you that real quick. And they're going to have some extra cables like this. This is a SATA cable for your hard drive. Um, they have a static bag. They are also going to have little screws for extra things. So never throw the box out. Keep the box. It's always good to have, especially if you need to return it. So I'm going to put that back over here because we won't need that again. Um, we're going to do a thing that I like to do, which is to bench run the computer. So we're going to be able to boot this computer up. Believe it or not, with just these components here, we're going to be able to start the computer up and see if it runs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my power supply out. And it's a good time to tag that power supply in there. This is a 450 watt power supply. So it's not going to win any awards for, you know, super high power, but it doesn't need to. And like I said, most people over spec their power supplies. They make them too strong, too big. So I highly recommend, you know, looking at a power supply calculator. There's a bunch of them online and then finding the one that's right. So this is the power supply connector. So I'm going to get you in line here as close as I can to this. So this is what it looks like. It's 20 pins plus four. So if we do that. They line up to each other to make the full ATX power. I'm waiting for somebody to ask why they do 20 plus four, but maybe they'll ask in the chat there. Um, the thermal grease isn't in the shopping list. That's a perfect uh, comment, RJ, there. One of the things about that, the CPU that you get in the box will come with a thermal pad from uh AMD. And that's just as good. It comes built in because I've taken this on and off a few times that pads not, not there anymore. So I would recommend, you know, in my case, I use some thermal compound. Some people don't like the thermal pads. They'll take it off and use uh, the compound. Anyway, I, I think that they're just fine. So I've put that connector down. It is indexed. So it'll only go on one way. And that's for the motherboard. This is the graphics card. So this 450 watt CP, or uh, sorry, power supply, has two eight pins, which can also be two six pins, or can be a six and an eight pin, depending on how you configure the connectors. So, and Zach, awesome. Yes, he does know the old AT ATX compatibility. Yeah, man, Zach's got some uh, some knowledge there on PC building. That is absolutely right. The original power bus was only 20 pins, and then they added four more. And then they added this next one, which is a CPU power connector so these power hungry cpus started getting bigger and bigger and then they added a cpu power connector so what we're doing right now is we're just going to bench this thing we're going to put this connector on right there and i've already included here and i should have told you here when i put the cpu fan on the top of the motherboard is where the cpu header is and it's keyed so it only fits on one way or it should only fit on one way if you do it right and you put that over the little plastic tab and you just push down and there we go. So we have a runner here. This should, in fact, run. I'm, what I'm going to do, just to make things, uh, this is always the dramatic part, is will it boot up? So I'm turning it 90 degrees. I'm putting my HDMI cable. That was in the laptop. That's what I was just showing you. We're going to pull up <laughs> the machine. So it's dark right now. I'm going to turn the power on to the machine. Now, I'm going to show you one thing real quick here when I'm touching this. Um, and most techs do this with a screwdriver, but you take this screwdriver, there's these two pins in this corner, and I don't know if I can get any closer to it there. There's two pins, there's one missing. The two pins right there are the power switch, and you'd find that in the motherboard manual, which I recommend, and I'll 
show before we get going. I'm making sure there's no screws underneath the motherboard here. We're going to go back and uh, let's get an over under in the chat. How many people think this thing's going to boot up the first time I hit the button here? <laughs> We're going to find out. Any, any wagers boot up or not? Hey, Jeremiah, thank you so much for the follow, man. I, I appreciate it. You get good karma today, and hopefully that's good luck for us booting up here. <laughs> so this is Will It Post, we always call it. And I'm going to hit that. And I got a spinning fan, so that's a good sign. And we're waiting for a logo of some sort on this input channel. So this is on the HDMI input. Make sure I did everything right. <laughs> this is one of the slowest machines I've noticed for a, uh, a BIOS, you know, uh, splash screen to come up. That's one of the things I did notice about it. So we've taken and we installed the CPU. We installed the memory. And we are testing it right now for the first time to boot up here. Drum roll. <laughs> Jeremiah's saying good luck. And th this is exactly the reason I do this is I like to make sure, hey, we got an ASRock logo and we're in the BIOS. There we go. Just like that. So you can see the memory that we have. We don't have a keyboard hooked up. I can rectify that. Um, just a quick reminder too, if you have a wired keyboard, I noticed on this one, the BIOS is so fast in booting. I couldn't hit F10 uh, or sorry, F2 to get into the BIOS while it was connecting. It was literally so fast and booting up. And I couldn't get into the BIOS without a wired keyboard. So I'm just plugging in a USB. We're wireless. Now, what's cool about these newer BIOS is they have a uh, mouse interface. You know, if you were the old school days, you didn't have that capability. We can go under advanced. We've got all the different tools. We've got our hardware monitors. We've got our... Um, fan settings that we can go through. Some of these can be run inside the windows. You can go through and set those. You can set the memory speed. That's also another really important thing to do on your RAM here is to get that with your XMP profile. So you see where it says load XMP setting auto. So this is how you get the most speed out of your RAM. This is actually a thing where people <laughs> <laughs> okay, success. Yes, thanks, Dave. Uh, this is where a lot of people mess up is they'll get this really cool RAM, they'll slam it in, start the machine up, and they're running at, you know, whatever the default is, uh, 2066 down there, or 2666. So if I load the XMP profile, and then I say to exit, and I save changes, it's actually going to update that memory, and it's going to run at a faster speed. So that's one of those just silly things that people forget to do and they don't run their memory at the, the highest speed that it can run at. So that's the machine. It's all ready to go. I didn't hook the hard drive or the SATA cables up. That's something we'll do when we put it in the case. We're ready to jump over to the assembly part here of it actually in the case. Who wants to see some gameplay though? <laughs> I know I do. I want to see, you know, just some gameplay. I have to thank my assembly friends here that have come over for the holidays and they helped me do some pre-testing on this machine. And it actually turned out really well. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to load up some footage so you can actually see how it ran uh, in some games. So we're going to show a couple different games. First one, obviously Fortnite, because it's Fortnite. <laughs> and I'm going to bring that. So I need to say how to get to full screen video, full screen. And we'll go over there. So again, this is the machine playing Fortnite here. Frame rates are not bad. Like again, you know, I don't know if I don't have the frame counter turned on here, but this is in performance mode. And one of the interesting things about Fortnite is they actually updated this. So again, this is just running around shooting at people. Um, they updated it very recently so that it has a performance mode, which uses multi-threaded rendering. So multi-threaded rendering, when you have this CPU, and I'm going to put the CPU back up here on the, the show here because that's the star of our show right now when you have that cpu that i just highlighted in the carousel um, that multi-threaded rendering uses multiple cores so it's a six core 12 thread amd cpu so pretty impressive actually you know it, it does lower the textures down a little bit but that's totally playable right um, so that's one of the the games that we'll take a look at i'm going to come back here take that out and <laughs> Valorant, I don't play this game much. That's my that's my bad. I should play this game more than I do. But uh, I'm going to bring that full screen in and let you guys see this one. So 
and thank you to my friend's kid who helped play this game for me because I am no good at it. Uh, but, you know, we can run in here. One of the problems with this game is it's not a good game to go quickly and just do a quick test. Um, so let's see here. We're going to go through there. And you can see the gameplay, actually. You know, decent frame rates on this. Another game with multi-threaded rendering and very low textures. So not a ton of textures needed to play this game. So just wanted to show you that. So this is this exact machine uh, built earlier and playing these games live. So just wanted to show you that as well. I think I might have one more classic game. Uh, and this one came with my Game Pass subscription. Uh, <laughs> and don't all call it out first when you see it. But here is another one. Da, da, da. <laughs> and it plays pretty good in this. This one does have more textures, but it is an older game, obviously. And hey, Lee and Tracy's, thank you so much, by the way. I just saw your follow. If you guys have any questions about this budget build that we're doing, just let me know. You know, go ahead and shoot it out in the comments. Um, if there's a compatibility question you have, or maybe there's a game that you like to play, we can talk about what we think the frame rates might be on that. So again, Skyrim here, it's, it's a classic. You got to put that out there. Um, I did not get to play through this all the way like I wanted to. I just had things come up and, you know, I'm kind of looking forward now that I have a couple of extra gaming machines sitting around. Not a lot of time, but I'm looking forward to go back and playing this game some more. So that's just a, an example of some footage there from those two games, well, three games technically, that I wanted to show you real quick. And then we're going to come back over here. And we're going to get to the, the build phase. We're going to put it in the case here. So first things first, got to shut it down. I'm going to leave everything assembled except the power. So I'm going to have to take that power supply out. And it's actually good because that's going to be the first thing that goes in to the new case. Um, another interesting thing, keep your case boxes, by the way. When you have case boxes like this, keep those case boxes. And that's what I'm going to highlight on the carousel. So if you're following on Amazon, that should have just popped up down there. This case, super duper duper light, but cases are awkward. This one's a little bit wider than the standard case, I would say. So, you know, you want to make sure that you have something to protect it when you're transporting it. If you're building this machine to flip, um, and that's a very good use case for these under $500 machines, you can build it and throw it on Craigslist for $550, $600, whatever you want to charge for it. And a lot of people will buy it. But if you're doing that, Keep the, the box because once you put all the components in, you can have all that padding and it fits perfectly. So I'm taking out the side of the case here. I'm going to show you guys on the second camera. So I'm just taking off these screws and they're thumb screws. So they actually have, I'll show you here in just a second when I get this one out. So they have just little texture on them. There you go. And that's how you can get them out. I'm going to put them on my mat so I don't lose them. And the side comes off just like this. Now, part of the reason I picked this case is, one, it has a lot of cool RGB. It, it's going to look really good when it's all together. Um, the second thing is it has an integrated controller. So this little board right here that you see, that little board is an RGB controller that can run fans and, um, you know, is all set up. So there's that. The other thing is it has the controller so it can run them without motherboard control. So this motherboard has RGB, but it's the old strip lighting style. If you were to buy this, that's fine. It can actually run in this case. If you were to buy the upgraded, excuse me, motherboard that I showed, you could actually plug this connector in. And there's several different kinds here, but you can actually plug this connector. See those, there's missing pin in the middle. That's how you know it's for data. It's a VDG plug, I guess. Um, if your motherboard's upgraded and it has that, then it's addressable. So you can make each fan do something different, but that's what the attachment is there. And then for different manufacturers, they have the other ones here. That actually even has the letters on it. It's a VDG right there. Uh, it's got the voltage data and ground. Um, okay. And buyers feel a lot better when you have the original boxes too. So if you're going to start to flip machines, yeah, it absolutely is nice to have that. It does have an SSD cradle in the back. It's got room for some big old spinning hard drives down below. A uh, couple other things I'm going to show you here. If for some reason you need to clean this, and I got to go to the side here to show you this, but if you need to clean this, you reach up underneath the front of the case and just pull. It's always, it sounds like going to a chiropractor. Let's see. Am I going to do this the hard way or the easy way? 
You just gotta, you gotta do it with authority. You can't, can't be that way. There's that massive fan. I'm going to pull that up so you guys can see how big that thing is. This is a 200 millimeter RGB fan. One thing I noticed about this case is it's super quiet. So this, this Muse Tex 200 millimeter case, it's really quiet because the bigger the fan is, the less speed it actually needs to turn at to get the same air volume or more. So that's really cool. Just taking a look for some questions here. Not captive thumb screws. There you go. <laughs> yes, these are the thumb screws. So uh, again, for easy cleaning, you can take that off. You can clean that. You can clean the mesh grill that it has in here. It's just a real simple design. We're going to leave that off until we're a little bit further in the build process. So overall, super light case, you know, and, and light cases, you know, take them or leave it. There's a couple things that they could improve upon, but it does have for the price those fans, the addressable fans and the controller are about $30 to $40 if you had to buy them separately anyway. It has a removable mesh filter. So th those fans up on top are putting out a lot of air and that's going to you know, have dust in it. So it's got this filter. It's also good because it keeps things from falling. <laughs> Hopefully you guys can see this, this top filter. It keeps things from falling into your fans. So if you've got screws or little little items that could fall off your desk if you have this on the floor, and they could fall into one of those holes, that's bad. So this is another way to kind of protect that. It does have top USB 3. It's got separate audio connectors here. And then it does have your LED buttons. So overall, a very good case for the price on here. Um, and, you know, in decent build quality, like I said, you know, it's not going to win any, you know, awards for being super heavy, but a lot of things are, are nice about it. Another cool thing I noticed last night, if you are going to get a GPU, it actually has real slot covers. You don't see that very often in these super budget cases. So I'm going to bring that up over here. So it has these real slot covers here, and it also has a vertical GPU hole. So you can basically take these two out and vertically mount your GPU, which you don't see really often in the low end cases. You rarely, rarely ever see that. So I'm just matching this up here. So I'm taking a look at the direction that my motherboard's going to go in. And you can do this to be really easy on yourself. You're saying, okay, I need my motherboard to go in this way. It's going to mount that way. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the IO shield. And it comes in from the inside. So if you're assembling along with this video, this is that point where you need to put your IO shield in. If you forget to, good luck. <laughs> you end up having to do almost the entire build again. It just pops in there. And I'm just helping to support the outside as I push this in. It looks like it's in all the way. So there's my I.O. shield. So when I put my motherboard in the case, it's going to go ahead and um, fit through those. Now, I like to do my power supplies next. And there's one thing about this case. A lot of power supplies can be mounted in both directions. This one, you can only mount in one direction. And you may be able to mount the other way, but you're not going to get the screws to line up because it only has one set. And it does have a removable mesh filter on the bottom, but that means that your power supply is going to be uh, drawing air from the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in. I'm going to unplug it from the mains power. Um, so there's the power supply unit itself. I'm just going to align it. So fan down alignment. That's the only way you can put it in in this case. And I'm going to slide it in. Now these power supply units use the larger of the, the connector style, so or the screw style. So you're going to have two kinds of screws here. I'm going to show them up on the camera for you. So you're going to have coarse thread, and that's a hex head, and you're going to have these fine thread screws. And so to do the power supply, it will come with four of the larger size. So go ahead and save those. I like to use a silicone mat just to hold all the connectors while I'm working here. And I apologize, I won't get a good shot of this, I don't think. Unless I to use this, let's see what we can get away with. Maybe you can see that. There you go. So go ahead and just notice I got my Skyrim horns over there. If I'm playing Skyrim, I gotta gotta wear that. Or Oregon Trail for some reason. I, I seem to wear them also <laughs> doing the Oregon Trail. Uh, it's one of my other favorite games on a vintage Apple IIe. So we're gonna go ahead and install this into the case. Now I'm not super tightening these down. You don't have to, you don't want it to rattle off obviously, but when I'm putting them in, I like to have a little bit of flex on it, uh, especially on these more budget cases. Cause if, if the holes aren't perfectly lined up to the power supply that you have, 
It gives you a little room to move it around. Now all of them are in, now I can go back and snug them. So that's just a quick tip on how I do it. And now they're all snugged. Now, as far as cable management goes, <laughs> I saw a meme this morning. It was so funny. They were talking about cable management and they said the Borg was just awful at cable management because they had <laughs> all the cables on the outside. It's true. So you're going to want to run your cables up something like this along the back. There is about a, a almost a three quarters of an inch to hide your cables. There's only a few of the cables you need though. So that's that one I was showing you earlier here. This is that PCI Express. Because we don't have a, a graphics card, I can just take those. I can bundle them up. This motherboard also comes with a few of these twist ties, almost like sandwich ties. So I could do that, or I could use a um, zip tie if I wanted, and I could get these out of the way. Now that one's not going to be long enough, but I'm going to slide this way in the back under here because we know we're not going to use that. That's going to help you later when it comes down to cable management. That's going to make it a lot easier on you. And we're just going to, to sort through these and see what we need. Now, the main cables I like on this EVGA are, are sleeved here. So they have this, this uh, mesh sleeve around them, which is kind of nice. The other cheaper power supplies, usually <laughs> my friend, <laughs> he likes to call them the uh, ketchup and mustard cables. They have the, the standard colors, the um, red and yellow. So we come over here. So that's a good good routing path there. That looks pretty good. That's going to be good for my motherboard power. Now, when you get that motherboard in, then I would put the next one in. That's that CPU power. You're going to need one of these for this motherboard. It has one additional CPU slot. So I can, I can sneak that up there, but I'm going to wait for that one. So we're going to go back out wide here. This is the, the fun part now. At this step is when I like to put the motherboard in the case. And you know what I'm going to do to do that. I'm going to slide all this down and try not to lose a hundred screws. I'm going to put this over here in the middle, just so I can get a better view for you guys. And we're going to set it down. I'm going to bring the keyboard out of the way here. If you got any questions about this build, we're building a gaming machine here and we're live on Amazon and a few other services. But if you have any questions about this build, shoot them out in the chat. And if you want to know where you can get all of the parts, go ahead and take a look at the link in the video description and or the carousel and you can find them. So I'm going to see if I can get a good view here to work from. There we go. So this is an MATX case. We're looking at the, the Mustex MATX case. And so it's a little bit smaller than some of your larger full size cases but it does fit these boards and ITX boards. So what I like to do here is line up my IO shield with that. And I'll just show you the other side view here. So that's what I was doing is just making sure all the items fit through. And sometimes these little tiny, if you don't do it right, sometimes these little tiny uh, grounds, the, the things that hold against it, they'll get caught up in there. So you just gotta be careful on that. So we're installing the motherboard. The other thing that you can do, and I already had to do this once, if you're looking down in here, the motherboard has many different of these standoffs. In this case, it was actually in that hole when I got it from the factory. I moved it up one because my motherboard has my standoff there. So I like to look at the six standoffs that are here and just visually align them to the motherboards to make sure that they're in the right spots and everything's going to work good. So just lining those up then you can see hopefully down in there the holes are lining up pretty good there's a little bit of tension because of the the io shield so i'm going to push that in just a little bit and then i'm going to start putting screws in now these screws for the motherboard are actually um, right here so i'm going to put that one in and use it kind of as our pivot these are the fine threads we talked about the thick the coarse thread and the fine thread and again, I don't like to tighten these down super tight because we're going to need some movement here to get the rest of them to align. The next one I'm going to try to do are some of these by the where the normally the graphics cards and your expansion slots would go. There we go. Now you can decide. Some people don't put all of them down. You know, that's a personal preference thing. If you're not going to put a GPU or you just have I.O. headers down below, I'm going to do it just to be complete and comprehensive here and I do want to pull up the motherboard manual 
So when you are going to be assembling this, and maybe it's your first time building a computer, if you pull up the motherboard's manual, it's going to tell you what all those ports and connectors are. They look kind of daunting right now because there's a lot of them. But if you're in that situation, it's really cool. So, Deadeye, thank you for the follow on Amazon. I told you guys I would call you out and you do that. That is just awesome. Um, when you follow me on Amazon, you're going to get to know every time in the future that I go live. If you're not a fan of AMDs, let's say, I can tell you I've got an Intel budget build coming up. And it's a, it's a great deal. Um, the chip was a lot cheaper on that one, so it's going to come in a little bit cheaper. If 500 is maybe a little bit out of your price range. The drawback on a lot of those Intels... Hey, Mr. Mubot. Oh, man, it's late over there for you. Thank you for joining. Good to see you, man. Ah, there we go. Okay, sorry about that. I don't think you can see that with my little <laughs> picture in a picture there. Okay, so I'm putting these last two standoffs up top. So our motherboard is in. Now... The hardest two connectors to get connected are going to be up in this corner right here, way in the back corner. There's one CPU connector that you have to do for CPU power. This is also the time I like to put this here. Now, if you want to dress the machine up, in this case, the black cables don't bother me. But if you wanted to make like an all white looking machine, you can actually get cable extensions. I didn't put them in here, but that are color matched. So however you want the color to be. This next one I'm going to do a little bit differently because I want to show you guys something cool. So I'm going to lift it up. And the one I'm looking for is actually, let's see if we can see that. It's way up in this corner. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch over to the second camera and show you how I do this in the back. I'm going to look for that CPU one. That's the one right there. And I'm going to feed it. There's a little hole. I'm going to feed it through that corner. Now... There's other cables in this corner. So this is probably the, the hardest part of this whole assembly will be getting this in. And I have seen people in the past that want to make this easier on themselves. Just go ahead and inst uh, install this connector before they put the motherboard in. And then you just drop the motherboard in with those connectors already attached. Uh, and or you can move things out. So um, that's the, the state of affairs there. And this is where I get to be really limber here. And put this last one in. I'm going to flip it around and push down. And I got it that first time. I'm going to tuck the excess away from the fans. Because we don't want that to be hitting a fan and making noise. So the excess is tucked in. Again, really clean interior. That's the main power connectors that you need. Because there's no GPU, you don't have to worry about that. This is the USB 3 header. So I just want to show you guys that. So it's indexed one way. And we're just going to push it down on here on the USB 3. And I'm now that it's in the case, I'm not really pushing down like I was when it was flat. And I needed to get that CPU fan in. And you can tuck the rest of this in. A lot of these little spots here are for zip ties. If you want to zip tie things out of the way and make them look really pretty, you can do that. The next connectors that we're going to want to hook on are here along the bottom of the motherboard. And I'm actually going to bring these up online for you. I'm going to visit ASRock. B550M HDV, and I'm going to bring this up so you can see it in just one second here. And this is real common to go to the manufacturer of your motherboard, which I'm going to bring up now in the carousel. Go to the manufacturer of your motherboard here and go to support. I'll bring that up so you can see it. Hopefully this will show up. So you go to their website and just click on manual. There's the manual and they've got the quick install guide and we'll open this manual up. And so you can go through here and see what all those connectors are for. So they're going to have all the specs. They're going to have what CPUs you can use with it. This machine will support 4K 60 resolution through the, the onboard. So if you're worried about 4K. So this is what I wanted to show you. If this is your first time hooking a machine up, you know, doing an assembly, this really clearly shows you where all your connectors are. So I'm not putting my picture in a picture up because it's right where I want to show you. <laughs> but if you go look in this lower right corner of the motherboard, it has power LED, power button. I don't know if I can get you any closer on that. There it is. Power LED, power button, 
HD LED and reset. Now, when I did that bench startup and I hit these two pins, that's what caused it to start up on the bench without having to be plugged into anything. So that's what I highly recommend is to use that motherboard manual to help you when it comes to putting these connectors on. Now I've done this a lot and some cases will have them connected. And the reason I didn't, uh, <laughs> I stopped and showed you that is because of this. I'll show you when I slide the connector through, you're going to see what they've got here. So I'm going to slide this through and I'm going to have the machine down again. We'll go back over to the overhead camera. This is what they got. They got a whole bunch of different connectors and this throws people off a lot. And I don't want you to be worried by it uh, or scared to do anything because of it. But there's the reset switch, which we now know where it goes. And there's the power LEDs. And one of them's positive and one of them is marked negative. And then you have your power switch and your hard drive LEDs. So what I'm going to do, again, I'm going to go back. If I show you the other screen here, you see where the map is. So I'm my power LEDs on the closest row to me. The other ones are on the bottom. I'm just going to start mounting them that way. So we're going to do this. I apologize. It's not super bright in here because there's not a lot of light in the case, but I'm going to first mount the reset switch on the pins. That's the second one in. And then I'm going to take the hard drive LED, which is this one. And it has a positive side on it. I guess this is really hard to see, but the positive side goes to the, back of the case so that's that first row i like to do that one first we're almost done here with the hardest part of this build i tell you let's see if it'll lighten up if i get it closer so this is the power switch which goes on the back side those back two pins right there and then we have our two for the power led now the positive one goes to the where my hand is it's the positive one's going to be towards the back and I really wish I could get a better picture for you, but if you go by the motherboard manual, that's going to be the best. So there we go. So that's actually connected. I don't know if I can get any closer to, to show you there, but I do want to show you that. So that's one more connector that we have to do. There's a couple extra connectors in here as well, and you can kind of route these through as you're going um, to help with your cable management. There's a fancy one that has lots of colors. Looks a little bit like this one right here. And that is your HD audio. That's going to be your speakers for the front mounted audio. So that's going to go through here. Now I know that because we looked at the motherboard schematic here, if I go and I go to the left here, you see where it says HD audio one, it's almost at the far back of the motherboard. That means that I'm going to go over here and you see the case I'm sliding that up through that slot. You see that coming through right there. <laughs> I'm going to sneak this little one through here so that I can connect it there. And let's see, um, this would be my addressable header. We don't have an addressable motherboard, so I'm not gonna deal with that. And we do need SATA power and a couple other things, but we'll get to that in a second. So now that I have the HD audio, I'm gonna go ahead and just connect it to the board here. I'm gonna give you a view of that. Okay. So it goes to the back and it's keyed so that it only goes in one way. There's a, a spot that has a missing pin that'll prevent you from putting it in backwards so that's those this is the hard drive cable and what's cool on this machine is that the hard drive mounts to the back and so i'm going to use a traditional spinning hard drive to save money here some people will probably ask about that why do i use a fashion hard drive uh, sorry not spinning hard drive, a traditional <laughs> sata drive and the reason is i'm just saving money on this um, that's the only reason at all is I needed to, to save on my budget, so I went with a 240. And again, it doesn't necessarily matter what port those SATA ports are in. That one on the bottom side, sorry, is the top one on the bottom side is SATA 1, so we'll put it there. Okay, now we're gonna come to back again. There's the back of the case. So this is my controller here. Good morning, Ben Robinette. Thank you so much for joining, man. Good to see we're, we're almost ready to fire this machine up here. So this is the case again. This is the connector right here. It's normally a, a, what would be a drive connector. And what we're going to do is we're going to hook this up to one of these spare SATA plugs. And so what this does is this powers all of your fans and your RGB. So that's the one last connection that we're making. Now, what's interesting is 
this is the Kingston drive. Let me pull that up on the chat here. So I'm going to pull that. Pat Batter started following. Thank you so much, Pat. Awesome. You're going to get notified every time I go live now. So there's the Kingston drive right here. So that's a 240. I've had really good luck with this A400 drives. I marked it in the carousel. So that's a, a really good setup. Um, I did just plug that SATA connector in the motherboard and I slid it back through. So I wanted to liberate that here and show you how you hook the hard drive up. So hard drive plugs in just like so, and there's a little L shape, so you can't mess it up. That's connected. And now if you're really confident, you can slide it back in here and you can put your screws in if you really want. These things are so light, they're not gonna go anywhere. Um, and then I can take this extra connector and I can just plug it onto here. And let's see if I got the angle in the right way. I do. Okay, so now our hard drive's in. Cable management, this is where everybody's going to be, you know, uh, spending a lot of time if they wish. They can go through and tuck their cables away and zip tie. You can go crazy on this. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to button this up, and I'm not going to button it all the way. And there's a reason for that. Uh, we still have to test the machine works. I did all the connectors, got everything running. At this point, everything should work just to make sure that it gives the best presentation. I'm going to put the front back on it. I told you guys how to take that off earlier. If you're just joining, this is John, the net guy. We're just about done with our budget PC build in the Muse Tex case. It's a RGB case, so super pretty looking. And even though you don't have a GPU in this, it can play a lot of the really cool games, Minecraft, Fortnite, um, Skyrim, if you want, Valorant. You can play all sorts of cool games here. And I'm going to go ahead and plug it in now. And we're going to get to see what it looks like in this fancy case. So I always love to do this question, <laughs> which is what's the over under? What do people think? Is this going to start up the first time when I get this going? Thanks, Amazon customer for your follow. I actually have to turn this a little bit because I don't have a lot of room on my HDMI. Give me one second here. I have to take that out. There we go. And plug it into my HDMI. Got it. We have our power turned on on the power supply. Um, if I were to put the back cover on, it's a real simple, just click in and I'll show you that before we wrap up here. So, um, over under on, if it's going to boot up or not, who thinks it's going to boot when I hit this magic button, you get a three, a two, a one, here we go. There we go. <laughs> Absolutely. It's a sharp looking case. That front panel, look at that, that RGB. And this is just one of the many modes that it has. Super duper clean install. I could even push that cable back a little bit for the audio. But um, yeah, you can take a look at this install. Super light case. Lots of extra room there. Room for a full-size GPU if you wanted to get one in there. It does have a tempered glass side. I was waiting for the boot up before I put the tempered glass side on. Let me see where I got that. Because there's one thing I like to do. <laughs> You're probably not going to get to hear this. This is kind of some ASMR stuff. But being able to peel. Let's see if you can hear that. There we go. Peeling the coating off. Sweet. And it has a little tiny magnet that holds this thing closed. And it has this little, almost like a socket for... Um, your iPhone, your phone, but that helps you open and close it. And it's got a removable side. So gorgeous looking little gaming machine for 500 bucks. You can build this entire machine. You can start playing games on it and very quiet overall. That's one of the things I noticed. Let's go see what it's showing us here. Boot, boot. <laughs> we got that. <laughs> That's flashy. Yes, it is. That's why I picked this one. It is one of the best looking cases I've seen in a while there. Um, just gorgeous. When they get on the GoPro, it does a much better job on that color. Now I can hit this LED button up front here and I can change through you know, your favorite football team colors, different rainbow effects. It's really, really slick here. 
So in one hour, start to finish, we've just basically built this gaming machine and it's ready to go. You could install Windows at this point. I've actually taken the liberty of installing Windows and some games on it. So there's a, there's a blue. And then, so what it does, it goes through every color and then it goes through a cycle effect. So if I hit it again, it'll do a new color. If I want it cycling white, I can do that. And again, these are just the built-in RGB controllers. Uh, we're looking at the Mustex 200 millimeter case. There's also a version of it in black, which looks really sharp. Uh, same RGB effects. I'm going to try to get us back to that rainbow because I really like that rainbow look. <laughs> there it is. Okay, um, let's switch over and see if we're in Windows. We are in Windows already. Look how fast that was. I, I do want to actually shut it down and start it back up from scratch. So that's the machine here that you're looking at. You're going to see it turn off. Watch how fast this machine boots up. So if you've got an older, slower computer, maybe one that's not working the way that it should, you turn this thing on from zero to hero. <laughs> this thing is just awesome. And we're going to wait for the ASRock logo. So that's the computer's BIOS loading up. There's the Windows loading and Windows loaded like that. So that was five seconds maybe. So if you've got a slow computer, this is definitely an upgrade for that. <laughs> Any questions in the chat? Will it run Warzone? I was waiting for that one. <laughs> uh, it will not run Warzone as equipped. Now, interestingly, let me grab a couple things. If you wanted to run Warzone, what I would recommend, find a, yourself a GPU. This is probably the minimum GPU you're going to want. This one right here. The Radeon RX 6600 XT. Now, you can get the RX 6600 as well. If you can find a GPU anywhere, just get it. Um, if you're gonna wanna play some of those more aggressive titles. What's cool is this base machine will get you playing today. And then when you can get your GPU, you can play all of the extra titles that require faster graphics. And a lot of these titles, you can just turn the quality down and they run just as good. So again, we're in Windows right now. There's a couple things I wanted to show you briefly here. And that, while we're in Windows, I'm going to put the USB connector in. So one hour, start to finish, with a lot of lollygag in there, <laughs> as they would say. And we've built an entire gaming machine. Now, I installed Windows on this already, but we could install it um, you know, by just using a USB key. I'll show you where you can get all that here in just a second. This is what I love about this chip. So it is a six-core, 12-thread chip super fast again you've got the memory you've got 16 gigs of 3600 megahertz ram so again super fast memory and it's a pretty basic ssd but you know for the price i think this one was about 27 dollars. i'll pull the ssd up here as well and you can see that this is the kingston ssd it's 27.99 right now 20 percent off so i just pulled that up on the carousel so that's a really really cool system I do want to show you again where you can find all of these. Now, to do that, I have to unplug my one HDMI that I have for everything, and I'm going to bring it over here. And you guys let me know what you want to see next. Do you want me to, to launch some games on this thing, and I can show you some of the, the performance on the gameplay? Do you want me to show you some cool upgrade paths? This is a live show. You can tell me, unless you're playing on replay, then it's not live. <laughs> but you can tell me in the chat what you want to see about this machine. Do you want to see anything about how I installed any co specific component? Maybe you're just joining and you missed it. Uh, just let me know about that. To uh, help you out here, if you visit that URL that's scrolling across the top, this is my Amazon shop. So if you come down here, you got all my videos that I make for other stuff, but if you go to $500 Budget Gamer, these are all the parts you need to make this. I would also highly recommend if you're comfortable building computers that you can look at the Amazon warehouse deals because they've got some great deals on these. I bought this motherboard from the Amazon warehouse. They also have a black version of this case and I thought I checked out already, but apparently I haven't hit the, the go button. So if you guys want a case for 4886, it's in Amazon warehouse right now, hit that go button. You can check out and have that case in black and save yourself a little, well, about 20, $24 roughly there. So that's that. So that's where you find the build list. If you want to upgrade a few of the parts, maybe you want more storage. That's one of the things I would recommend. This Crucial P2 right here is a great upgrade path for this NVMe drive. You can definitely uh, put that in there and this will upgrade the storage quite a bit. If you want to add wireless to this build, you can either add a $10 USB wireless card 
or you can get this HDV Wi-Fi from MSI, same exact build process that I did here. And then you'd have Wi-Fi built in. So that's a really cool feature as well. You can upgrade the power supply. Um, so, you know, although you were mentioning that you were interested in running Warzone, if you were going to go with a really big GPU, I would put that in. That 6600 is going to run even on the 450 that we have in this right now. So that's $20 more here to go with a 750 watt power supply. So I just wanted to show you those. I'm just looking at the chat. I see Amazon Fangirl. <laughs> Thank you so much for the follow. You're going to get notified every time I go live. Like I said, if you want to build this machine, it's under $500 when all the parts are in stock. You can see it up there on my shop net guy uh, address. It's a gorgeous looking machine. Really, really easy to play uh, games, you know, like Minecraft, Skyrim, Apex Legends. It's going to play a lot of those games with at least, you know, 60, 50 to 60 FPS. So it's going to do well on those. And then if you add a GPU later at your convenience, it's going to do that. Again, gorgeous addressable RGBs up front. You can find your favorite team colors there or your favorite RGB colors, and you can do that. And it has a built-in controller. Um, from a noise perspective, the machine's very quiet uh, and it has good airflow. I'm gonna show you here. So this is the, the back cover. So I'm just gonna tuck my cables a little bit out of the way here and not pinch anything, but I can put that back cover on There we go with these included thumb screws. And then you can kind of see this whole machine all buttoned up and that's going to help with airflow. Now that I have everything buttoned up, I have the front and the back. I can really feel that. That's kind of cool. You can definitely feel, I don't know if I can visually demonstrate how much airflow we're talking, but yeah, it's, it's definitely, Got some airflow coming out the top there. <laughs> so yeah, it's blowing, blowing out of those two top fans and that rear fan is putting out a ton. So, you know, also if I put that up front, you notice how it's holding onto that. So it's just a sticky note that I've got. And the airflow pulling in from that 200 millimeter fan is yanking it in there. So you can see how it's holding that up. So definitely a, a good machine, a great starter budget build. If you want to purchase everything that you saw here. If you buy those items that are in my Amazon shop all at once, this video is going to be up and available for you. So you can actually go to that. If you're not following me on Amazon, the links are in the description on how to get to Amazon or to get to the parts, but um, you can build this. You can play this video back. We just did all of the steps to do the build. And if you pick up in that extras, if you pick up that windows 10 pro, let me show you here real quick. <laughs> That's my little USB key. The only step that we didn't do was install windows, which is to put this in and install windows. You'd have a full gaming machine. This is going to be better than your standard Dells. You know, a lot of the Dells I see at other stores, they're, they're an I three processor. So there's, there's not enough cores. They're not fast enough. They don't have a lot of upgrade ability. They don't have standard connectors. You can't put a GPU in them and you're going to pay at least five or more uh, for them. So under $500 as equipped, and you can have a machine like this, and you can go from there. So this has been John the Net Guy. Hey, Amazon Fangirl says, my son wants to build a PC, so I'm researching here. Um, excellent question. And uh, Krizan, I'm gonna, sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. Krizan said, no graphics card. There is no graphics card, but that's the cool thing about this, is this chip, the special chip that we're using, the AMD 5600G, which I just happen to have here, and I'm gonna pull that up on the carousel now. This is the key to making this thing run so good. So this is an APU, they call it. So it's their 5000 series. They're just, this one's not even opened, um, but that has graphics integrated to it. So it's enough to play most of these games. I'm going to do one last demonstration just because nobody's going to believe me that this thing's a game player. <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead and open back up that Fortnite so you can see. I love playing Fortnite with my daughter. <laughs> I don't know if there are games uh, that you guys like to play, but I'm going to go ahead and show you here. This is this machine earlier playing Fortnite. So you can see it right there. My little connectors came out. Um, but yeah, it's, it's playing Fortnite. And the FPS in the upper... Oh, I do have the counter on this one. 160 FPS. 
So you can play these games in performance mode. That's one of the games that we did, and that's playing on this machine right now. I'm going to go open one more game for you guys to see. Uh, Valorant. Just going to pull that up real quick. And we're going to go back to full screen view. I don't have a frame counter on this one. Sorry for that. But there you go. So that's running around, you know, again, I would say estimating probably 40 to 60 and then died. <laughs> so the FPS there, you know, probably 40 to 60 FPS, which is more than enough uh, for fun gameplay, let's say. So I like that. And uh, Rev, Rev and Arrow, welcome so much. Thank you for being in the chat with us. I really like the case. This case is a bargain. Yeah, absolutely. I, I really like this case, too. Um, I did buy an extra one too but that's the 200 millimeter fan up front super quiet and when you plug all this thing into your motherboard and you can control all that the, the rpms and fan stuff you can even lower the fan speeds down more so that it just hums i'm going to check for any other questions in here yes onboard graphics that's exactly what it's running and when you do get your upgraded chip then or sorry your upgraded gpu the same chip has 12 threads and six cores so it's going to be great for running that uh, looks like something from Half-Life game, Thomas Jacobson. Yeah, you know, a lot of these ones are, uh, I don't know what the genre you'd call them. Uh, one that I didn't show you guys on here that this thing rocks at, uh, eSports titles like Rocket League. My daughter and I play that a ton. This thing would just rock. It's over 100 FPS in that game. That's a really fast-paced game. Um, coming back here just real quick to shut us down. I want to invite you guys. There was a show that I did yesterday. If you want to take a look at it. Um, I did this show yesterday, and I went through a bunch of really cool monitors. So I'm going to bring that up here for you. There are two monitors, 24 inches, that would be great for this. The Scepter one and the Acer. Both one of them's curved, one's not. Those would have been great. So that was yesterday. You can see that in my past live streams. And the monitor that's behind me here is the Scepter. This is a bargain monitor. And I did hear from them that it is going to be on Cyber Monday special, too. So... That one is not in this live stream, but it's on the live stream I just did yesterday. And you can take a look at that. That would be a great pair to this machine, that 27-inch scepter. It's got like 430 nits of brightness, so super cool. Um, one quick thing I want to tell you about, also coming up, is a budget build with an Intel 10. 105F. <laughs> this CPU is an interesting CPU. It's on their lower end, but it's a little bit faster than some of the other ones. And I do have a GTX 1060 graphics card I was able to pick up. And so that's in this case. Uh, it's a Montec 100 case, which is one of the upgraded cases that we show. And I'm doing it with my friend Joe there from Pinky Tech Channel. There's a, the banner for our live stream I was working on, but that's coming in December. So if you haven't followed already, Go ahead and give me a follow on Amazon and you'll be able to get notified when that budget build comes up. And you can also check out my Amazon shop right here again to see where all of these things were built. This has been John the Net Guy. I'm going to have to wrap it up here and go have breakfast and, and get my morning started. But I wanted to thank you guys all for, for following along with this live PC build. And thank you guys in Amazon. Uh, uh, Amazon Fangirl, Pat Batters, Deadeye, and all of the other people that added the follows today. Lee and Tracy's, Jeremiah, I saw you there, and Amazon Customer, whoever you are. <laughs> Thank you guys all for following me, and that's a wrap.